Welcome to Author's Voice, a virtual book signing network. Uh, this is Lady Bird and Friends, and I am your host, Betsy Bird. Welcome once again. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, today, we are talking about a lovely book seen here. We Are Shining by Gwendolyn Brooks, illustrated by Jan Spitty Gilchrist. Now, this book coming out with Harper. Uh, is 1799. It is a fantastic celebration of the works of uh, one particular work of Gwendolyn Brooks with beautiful illustrations. We're going to talk a whole lot about this. And who is with us today? I will give you a hint. It's not Gwendolyn Brooks. She's dead. No, it's Jan Spilby Gilchrist, one of the great American children's illustrators. Uh, Miss Spivy actually began her work as a children's illustrator in 1988 with a book called The Children of Long Ago with Lessie Jones Little. And since that time, she has worked tirelessly in the field, uh, producing memorable art for books like The Great Migration, Journey to the North by Eloise Greenfield, uh, Nathaniel Talking, also by Miss Greenfield, um, your own book, uh, My America, um, your Harper Collins page says that you have worked on 74 books, and I actually think the yeah. number is higher than that. Eight, yeah. 83. 83? Yeah. Okay, you've worked at 83. We're going we're gonna to get a little bit into that. So Until thank I don't you, do anything thank else. Thank you so much for joining us <laughs> today. Um, just so y'all know, if you are watching this live, uh, there's this little button uh, below the player uh, where you can actually submit a question to Miss Spivy right here, and she will answer it for you. Um, so, you know, put in your name and where you are from. Otherwise, you're going to be anonymous, which is fine, but I will say your name, so <laughs> tell me your name. Um, and most importantly, you could get a signed book right now if you really want to. Uh, there's actually a little button below, um, and the other, she will sign this, like, right now in our studio for you. It is so cool. So come on and do that thing. In the meantime, I want to ask you some questions. Great. All you right. You guys are really cool. That, oh, that <laughs> yeah. Is. Oh, sorry. That's, that's, huh. that, I can't accept that because you are way cooler than I am right now. Um, so as I mentioned before, the first children's book you worked on was in 1988. But um, that wasn't the first time you, you took a brush and you put it to a canvas or anything like that. Like, how did you get your start? And how did you get into children's books? That's like two separate questions. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, my mom would say I was born with it. So mm -hmm. I've been <laughs> drawing since I can remember. I, you know, like I can't remember when I started my name, so I can't remember when I started drawing. Mm -hmm. But I know my father was a pastor, and he had these great big Bibles with all these illustrations in it. And I used to try to copy them mm -hmm. all the time. Oh, that's cool. <clears throat> I thought I was doing it in color, but it was really pencil. But Leave the Beaver was black and white, and I thought I saw color. So, <laughs> I, so there was no color television. So yeah. actually, in my head, I thought I was seeing color. But they said that was a good thing. I actually teach that way when I'm children, to see color with the, so when I teach shading and all of that stuff, to Especially see Especially since color. kids today don't really see black and they white. They don't experience black and white. If, even if they get black and white comics, they want color versions. Absolutely. So, so, yeah. I, and I, so far, if I'm teaching art, I'm teaching black and white first, and then changing the black and white. To color, that's which makes fun. it easier yeah. for them, because that's how I saw it, mm -hmm. and it seemed to work. <laughs> but no, I've been drawing since I can remember. I used to copy. My mother had a baby every year. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there were fourteen of us, and there were nine younger than me. Wow! So I got. Oh, a chance you were a to, middle middle child. Yeah, really serious. Wow! Middle. So I got a chance to when the baby. My mother had them in the house, so they were oh boy to draw them while they were. Before they even opened We've their eyes. We've had plenty to draw. And she brought me one every year. So. There you go. <laughs> so if you got one wrong, you could try the next year and <laughs> you could get it right. There you before go. they yeah. ran away. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. And then how did you get into kids' books? Well, I actually um, doing everything as, a, as an artist my whole childhood. Mm -hmm. You know, entering contests, Scholastic, this, you know, Scholastic Magazine, Hard Copy contest and you enter it and then you felt like Rembrandt. And mm -hmm. I said, so everything child art I did. In mm -hmm. every school I was the, the artist, on the street I was the artist. But it was 1986 and actually Nora Brooks Blakely, who was Gwendolyn Brooks' daughter, oh. I actually met her 
we were, I don't know what, she, she might not like this. I call it the Zick factory, but I was going to a dermatologist and she mm -hmm. was sitting there next to me. And I met her, didn't know that her mother was Gwendolyn Brooks until much later. We mm -hmm. hung out, had a great time, and then had lunch one day and she just casually mentioned it, that her mother was Gwendolyn Brooks. Okay, so oh. she informed me one day that, Gwen, that Eloise Greenfield was going to be autographing in Chicago. I was like, oh, great. So we went down there together, and I took a print of one of my drawings of a child, because I did drawings of children since forever, mm -hmm. and I, I brought a big print to give to her for the gift for her work, because I had been Aww. reading them to my child. My daughter is 45 now, mm -hmm. but she grew up on you know, all these books. Yeah. So I brought this print to give to her, and she asked me to write her number my number down. Mm -hmm. And she said her mother had a book. And her mother was Leslie Jones Little. Her mother had since died. Oh. And Putnam, I started off at the top. Putnam yeah, and Grasset. Kind of. Yeah, because that's who had the mother's book, you know, in New York. So I don't know any better. I put, so I go to New York. So her daughter was able, able to get the illustrator for her mother's book? Well, she, she not really. She wanted me to show. Oh, okay. Patricia I was going to say, because usually editors are like, oh, Patricia was like the illustrator okay. weaves. But well, she was okay. Eloise Greenfield. Though. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. She was that like, is it, was, true. it was a little different. Yeah, that's so true. I kinda, but she, she, didn't, she said, no, there's no guarantee, but I'm an artist. What do artists do? We mm -hmm. would, if you told me it was on the moon, I'd try. Right. Uh, so it was in New York, and I was married to, I just married this wonderful guy. And um, he didn't really understand crazy until they married me. <laughs> he's like really, really straight. Got a crash course. So I run, and the baby, um, we had been married two years, and the baby was a year. And I went in and I said, we've got to go to New York. And because I said he didn't really, he said, well, she's an artist. Anyway, he was <laughs> really straight. He, yeah, but he, everything he did was organized. Everything I did was the flip, yeah, flip yeah. side of that. So we said, OK. So I, we loaded up the car. The truck, actually, it was a truck. Aww. And we put big paintings in, because mm -hmm. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. She said, go show them your work. So we headed out to New York with my daughter, my one-year-old, my daughter was 12, and my husband, and we went to New York on Madison Avenue with a big truck. With Which was the publisher again? It was? Putnam and Grasset. Oh, OK. So now they're Penguin Putnam, so. Yeah, which well, is now Penguin a, Random House. Yeah, they've been a bunch of, Philomel was the, actually the Yeah, imprint. that's also Phil part of Penguin Putnam. Yeah, no. right. Yeah, OK. Right, it just kept getting it just bigger, gets bigger, bigger, bigger. bigger yeah. But Tricia Lee Gouch. Madison Avenue, that's interesting. Yeah, it was on Madison. Okay. There was a whole lot of that's traffic, and here we Harper. are with this truck. Oh. And, I mean, I don't know anything. But so we, my husband parked, and I went and said, you know, I want to show my artwork, too. <laughs> Patricia Lee Gouch, who was the editor in chief? Oh, Patty! But do I know? Yeah, I love her. Aww. But do I know any better? I mean, I'm, I'm asking for like. <laughs> yeah. And they go, hmm, does she know you? I said, well, I don't know, but Eloise Greenfield said that I should show them my work. But Patty, mm -hmm. as you say, yeah. was so sweet. She came down and didn't look at me like I was, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. nuts. Oh, Patty's and one of the great editors of all time. Absolutely, yeah. it was my first book. Wow. She. Um, Asked me to bring the art. I said, she said, well, do you have a portfolio? I said, I have a truck. <laughs> and she asked me, to, and she, we brought the art upstairs, all these paintings, my husband helped. And they opened up a room, we put the art around the room, and I, she loved it. Aww. And that was the launching. That is a good so, start to it was any a career. Great story. So I always tell people, when I talk to my students, I say, don't try that. No. That's a, that's no, 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 no. That's why happen. they call breaking in. You break in one way and then they fix it that they way so no one else can get, get in that, get way. In the, yeah. that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's because, you know, I was naive. You yeah. Know? So you can't be naive again. So, yeah. yeah. yeah so <laughs> you, you disabuse them quick. Yeah. So just, they're not naive yeah. anymore. Yeah. Hmm. Now you have, you have four books with your art out in just 2017. I counted. Um, no, oh, you, you, you may okay. not be aware, but you have four uh -oh. books. <laughs> I know it's hard to keep track because the pub dates can oh, get no, like, moved all around. Okay. But OK, so you've got, um, you're in One Last Word, Wisdom of the Harlem Renaissance, which is sort of put together by Nikki Grimes. This is Oh, what, Nikki Grimes. Yeah, yes, yeah. 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 So, oh, and that's, that's, I just, oh, I just love her. That book is, I love her. Okay. <laughs> and it's a great book. Right. Um, we Are Shining, which of course is the book that we are going to talk about today. Right. Um, 
Seasons, a Gwendolyn Brooks experience. Yeah, that's and then Thumbtack Dancer. Yeah, which is another book that you did. Yeah, that's um, what, this um, year. Leslie Tryon. Yeah, you so okay. So you, <laughs> you 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 don't seem to slow down. Oh. You seem to have like a lot of stuff. How do you how do you do that? How do you, you just? Know, I don't know. Like I really don't know how not to do art. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to say no to art because it's it's all like an. My son did an interview and he said, well, you know, she cooks macaroni and cheese. So there, there you go. I'm not <laughs> okay. wasting my time cooking. cooking okay. So, so well, every, what I do is what I do. And I love this. As I was born, like I said, this is old to me as my name. Mm -hmm. It's as much me as my name. I remember once my husband and I were having a tiff. And he said, I didn't marry an artist. I go, oh. I think you did. Oh. <laughs> you know, I right. hate to bring this I married up now, wife. but yes. yeah. I, 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 oh, then he got it all straight. Mm -hmm. Artists and then Drea. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. At least you know what the order because is. Because I really, I, it's what I do. I love it. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a child, I used to lie in the bed and look at the ceiling and paint in mm -hmm. my head. So it's so nice working with kids, artists, because we relate in the same planet, mm -hmm. and they will tell me things like this. And I you know, because they have, they live in that strange world that I lived in. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, you know, in, with 14 kids, I was still on another planet. Mm -hmm. And there, there was, I had two little brothers who drew, but they were boys. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but the, when it time, came time to relate, it was better with an artist. And my mother used to say, that's my odd child. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really... I, I knew it was a good thing because she liked me, but I really didn't know what it meant, you know. Yeah. But but I, it helps me with children when I and I've been working with children since I was a child. I I taught art um, at St. Brendan, on in Chicago and seventy something and sixty seven mm -hmm. and something racing or somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. But it was a Catholic uh, church. My father was a Baptist minister, but we all worked there, and. The priest who gave me a scholarship to the Art Institute Saturday School. So they paid for me to go to school because I was supposed to cook. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to See be the previous thing about cooking. Yeah, I was hired to be the, the cook for the rectory. Mm -hmm. And they said, No, you can do it, you can do it. You just take the steak, it's frozen, out of the freezer, put it on a pan, and then you put it there in the broiler for till it turns away from raw, because <laughs> it was just <laughs> for a second. And then you put the potato when you wrap it and you stick it. I can do this. Like, and so I put it in one day, and Father Millen, who was seven feet tall, I was sitting on the floor and I was drawing. And he looked down and he said, did you draw that? And I said, yeah. He says, oh, yeah, you don't need to cook. And then he made me the teacher. Wow. And, they gave, and so I was a 14-year-old art teacher. Wow. And, and, that's, and so that's how long I've been working with arts. And so I, it's just everything art has been. And then I majored in art at Eastern Illinois. Mm -hmm. And then I got an MA in painting at University of Northern Iowa. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but all the while, I never stopped doing That's art. Wild. Never. Never stopped working in it and never stopped working with children in it. So they kind of went together. That's so nice. It's nice that you just like got it right from the start. And just yeah, I think it was just like dropped on me. I didn't mm -hmm. get a time to choose, but I love it. And I Go talk ahead. all the time. Yeah, yeah cause talk to kids about the unfortunate if you didn't love it. Yeah, pick something <laughs> I, that you like. I hate kids. Yeah, yeah, that, I, that would yeah. Be, yeah. That would that would not work out so well. Yeah. Well, let's talk. About, let's talk about this book. This uh, yeah. this new brand spanking new. I don't believe this has ever been a picture book before. This isn't no, like no, this is a poem that she wrote that has been republished mm, and redone with new a new illustrator never. or anything. Brand so, new. Where did this come from? Um, actually, uh, Nora mm -hmm. Brooks Blakely. Yeah. It's now Brooks Permissions is is it's where all of Gwendolyn Brooks' work is held, okay. and her daughter Nora is is over it, uh, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And when Gwendolyn Brooks was alive, I actually worked with Nora on the paintings for her scenery because she had a, a chocolate chips theater company for children. It was adult performing for children oh, cool. in schools. That's nice. Awesome. And so I did the scenery design sometimes, any kind of help with art. But I got a chance to just stare at Gwendolyn Brooks while she was there <laughs> and, and get to be in her company. So, but she, she wanted me to illustrate to her. She said that to me once, that she wanted me to do a book, and I never got a chance to do one for her. So 
actually, Nora gave me this. I was going to ask you if you'd ever done a Gwendolyn yeah. Brooks before. I, I, I wasn't I able never to find done you had. So. So, so, so this was kind of like a gift this year. And then, well, good for her, she said, but it was a thrill for me. Mm -hmm. And to do the, the adult, I, I don't know, it's called Seasons. So, yeah. I, so I did two. I did the picture book, mm -hmm. and I did the, the Seasons for young adult adults. Yeah, and I believe there are, in addition to that, there are two adult Gwendolyn Brooks collections out in 2017 on top of that that have gotten great know. reviews. I, I know this because I buy books from my library oh, for adults. Of course you know. <laughs> and so these new Gwendolyn Brooks have been coming in there, but then you've got these things on the kids' side as well. So yeah. Well, I think yeah. everything should be, I mean, I think kids should have a version of everything. Absolutely. Everything, all that is good that kids should have. And that's, so when I think, when, when someone's talking to me about something, history or anything, I said, oh, that make a great children's book. I see it that way. Mm -hmm. And if you, because I think they should know, mm -hmm. but they should know, you know, in a picture book. <laughs> right, right, right. Now, did you get to choose the poem at all, or, um, I or was did they or gifted with, it, was with the poem? It was gift. Poem. Yeah. So yeah, this so, is the so, one. That they, uh, I, I called up when Nora said my mom would really want you to, to illustrate this book. I called up Allison Day at Harbor and asked her if I could, you know. Mm -hmm show it to her and she's like yeah <laughs> <laughs> she's wonderful so I, I worked with Amy Ryan and Allison Day mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at Harper okay. well, that's good. but I've been at Harper forever yeah wow well, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah I, I like Harper a lot mm -hmm. they do yeah. they do such great books as well so this is a good one mm -hmm. um, so Stallion Books has been offering a collection of the full back catalog of your works um, and the works of Ashley Bryan and Eloise Greenfield, and they've been calling it um, the works of three legends and three friends. So are you three actually friends? Are you friends with Ashley Bryan and we, with Eloise Greenfield? Not only did, were we f friends, we traveled together as three legends three in the same mm -hmm. um, limo, truck, bus thing. Wow. So I guess we didn't kill each other, so we were great. But we, it, it was great. Eloise Greenfield and I were like family for a long time. Um, and um, Ashley Bryan, mm -hmm. I go, he lives on an island off oh. the coast of Maine. Cranberry. And, and, yeah, little Cranberry Island, Islesford. And so for almost 30 years, I've been going up, giving him a dollar store birthday party. Oh. So we would take this long journey up there. And my husband was nice enough to drive many of the times. Uh, most of the time, we drove. Drive from here, from here from in Chicago here to, to Maine, to, to Northeast Harbor, Maine, and then get on Ooh. a mail Ferry. boat oh. and go out <laughs> to the boat. island. And we did this, and, and it, oh. it began. It got more and more modern because when I first went out there, there was no internet. We didn't. Well, there's still he still doesn't watch television and things right. like that. So it's wonderful. It's like going back in time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You cross over and you, and I mean, they've got a schoolhouse that's had like eight kids. Mm -hmm. You had, um, you know, there's a, the post office, with, mm -hmm. that's Joy. Joy yep. has the post office and mm -hmm. it's all in the same building. And it, it, well, anyway, that's actual, yes, family. And mm -hmm. it's the fact he says family. That's cool. okay. Now, let's just get back to this book just a little bit here. Um, like just how, is this watercolor? It's watercolor. Do you yeah. mostly work in watercolor, or do you like to change it up? I, my mediums depend on the author's words. Oh, interesting. They always, it can, it's Does when, that come to you the minute you read it, or? It, it does. Mm -hmm. I don't, I have, I can't even explain it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, that would be an odd person thing. Mm -hmm. My, <laughs> but when I got that children long ago, it was my first book, but I knew it had to be pastel because it was 1910, mm -hmm. and, my, and when, when I was reading the poems, I wanted to be there, because I always want to be there. I see things in that community. Well, my grandpa was born in 1887. Mm -hmm. So when I went and told, he was 20 or something in 1910. Mm -hmm. So when he started talking about, yeah, back there, and I, I could see it in a haze, and pastels mm -hmm. look like hazy, soft colors to me. So that's how I chose that. So generally when I read it, I can see the medium. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Now, um, you've collaborated over the years with just such big names. Like, who are your favorite? I'm not going to say single collaborator, but who are some of the favorites that you've worked with over the years? Well, I got to say Eloise Greenfield first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Number one. She's like, and I think you've done the most like she books with me. her. Is that correct? 29. Okay, so that's one or two. 29. <laughs> yeah, yep. more than two. One or two or 29. Yeah, yeah. And then, 
Ashley Bryan. Mm -hmm. I did we, when I wrote the poem. I wrote the poem. My little, my little boy was a student ambassador. He he had, he had decided when he was three that he was going to be an ambassador. Mm -hmm. So when I wrote My America, it was based on his traveling mm -hmm. to different countries as an ambassador because he truly believed he was an ambassador. And I wrote My America. So I called up Phoebe A at Harper, who was my editor, who was my friend, friend, cousin, yeah. and asked her if I could ask Ashley to illustrate the same words with me back to back on on this if you know if first if, if you'll buy this manuscript. Oh, yeah. And she if, if. she loved the manuscript and then she said, sure. And so we we're the only um, illustrators at the time who had illustrated the same words in the same book. Oh, and Ashley was in Africa. So I never saw I never oh. saw his his paintings and he never saw mine. We didn't see it till the, it was all done. Oh that's interesting. So it was very exciting. Was this pre internet or was this post internet? Mm. Pre-internet. Okay, I so you wouldn't have even seen it. Like it wouldn't he, he matter wasn't anyway. like scanning them and sending and, them to And it was online, Jan right? and Ashley, so it wouldn't have mattered. Right. Actually. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, yeah. Ashley Bryan <laughs> isn't getting the scan around. Yeah. Like she's saying some yeah. scanning. And, yeah. Okay. And, I, and he and I are about. I'm. I'm I've moved on, but Ashley mm -hmm. and I were about the same place. Internet. What's that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. I want to talk a little bit about being an African American illustrator in the world of children's books in an industry that traditionally hasn't produced all that many. <laughs> um, now you've been around since the 80s. Uh, since you're around and you've just continuously like published until now, have you seen significant changes in the industry over the years or how your books have been promoted or not promoted or like have you seen or is it just exactly the same as it's always been? No, if there's growth, but I get frightened when they say, oh, it's getting better. Because it's good. if you're grandfathered in, mm -hmm. well, it, it's very hard for me to get published, because it's very hard for everybody to get published. Mm -hmm. And so you have to have something to sell. So if you're African American, then you have a different, you have a, 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 even a harder problem. Because first off, what bookstores? You know, the books, it's sales. It is about selling. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, I did Obama the Day the World Dance. Well, we knew right off the bat half of the country wasn't going to buy it. <laughs> 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 so, so, we, you know, we started off with if everybody on the other half bought it, <laughs> exactly. it would be half. And so, um, so you, you, you do realize that everybody is not going to buy it, mm -hmm. and, and it is a product. For me, it's art. And I'm, I don't care. I'm just having a good time. And I, when I see a child holding that book, I'm happy. But if it's an industry, yeah, they, they got to want you. So you, you have to have something to sell. And then they have to know that there is a bookstore or someplace to sell it right. and that people are going to buy it. So you know, it's a really rough field. It's really tough. I taught for 15 years at the, uni at the National Lewis University, and I taught this. And so I, I encourage my writers to do what I do. I mean. I would not be anywhere if I gave up anything, mm -hmm. you know. So that's how I, I have lived my life. My father was a pastor. You just keep going. You, you know, you don't. This is my dream. I wanted to be an artist my entire life. So I wasn't going to stop. And I, you know, I've gone through so much. I mean that I had a stroke November twelfth, and I had these three books to finish. Oh wow. I was I, I had flown into Dallas um, to receive award women that soar. Mm -hmm. So here I'm having a stroke the night before. Oh, so it was crazy. So I, but I at home I had left three unfinished books, mm -hmm. which have nothing to do. Those companies don't really have anything to do with my having a stroke. Mm -hmm. That it's it's been my work, it's been my dream, but it's also something I love. So all I was thinking about was oh, I got to get home. Yeah. And finish these books. So they helped you get out, not out of the stroke, that's not even a phrase, but they helped you they out. Have, like, absolutely. In your my, recovery process. My husband brought my, my studio, I have this wonderful studio that my husband built, built in 06. He brought the studio to the family room and he sat there and he brought me food and, he, and I finished those books. And he brought me my water for watercolor and stuff and, and I got through it. When the doctor called from Dallas, it was the neurologist said, well, you know, because I, I kept saying to him, uh, you know, guys, I can't stay here. Because it was a Saturday night, and I was going on the show. Mm -hmm. On Sunday night, uh, CBS was 
was filming on Sunday night. Mm -hmm. And they were thinking I was going to, like, I'm not staying in here. I have to go on this show. They flew me here for this. <laughs> and so my, my neurologist in, at uh, Northwestern here spoke with the neurologist at Dallas Methodist. And uh, Dr. Stoller said, oh, you might as well let her up. She's, she's, she's going. You <laughs> she's might as well go let her go one way or the other. And, then, then I, and so I went on the show. And then the next day I flew home back to work and my husband helped me get through the three books. I mean, like really, literally, passing me the brush. That's a good husband. He's a good husband. Yeah. He's a keeper. Okay. <laughs> I had a trial one that didn't, <laughs> it didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good to have a first round and then yeah. exactly. Really good one, yeah. exactly. So, so uh, what you do is what you do. Okay. And, and now I can't cook, so don't, okay. don't get me to do <laughs> so you're that. You're not going to shift careers like right. mainstream. Right. Right. Yeah. All right, well then I guess I've just got one question left, and that is, uh, can you say what you're working on right now? Actually, I just got um, a commission from the Daily Bread, mm -hmm. which is um, the largest, I guess, Christian publisher oh. people, ever, 60 million or something. They want me to do a cool. series to, uh, to diversify. This is my world, right? Picture books. Mm -hmm. Picture books, a series of picture books mm -hmm. that deal with um, Christian um, morality, which, you know, which, yeah, we, yeah, sure, which yeah, you yeah. would never do in mainstream. Like uh, real but, kids dealing with, with yeah, issues but, in a, with a Christian focus. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, I can write the stories, mm -hmm. and they will add the Bible verses that relate. Oh, that's to that, yeah, and so at the end of huh. the story, when the, for instance, the one I'm working on, I, can, I don't know if I should say that. I don't know if they were like, that. anyway. But the the one I'm working with, I have, there were 14 of us, so I have every vice, because everything was a sin in our house because my father was past. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when um, <laughs> you got them all listed out. Uh, exactly. <laughs> so, I, and I just want to know how funny do you want me to be? That's, oh, good that, call. That's what I, I I'm, yeah. you know, I'm asking my editor because I've got them. And so and I have a brother, Junior. Mm -hmm. Junior was the boy that, because there were 10 of us at home. My brother, there was Jan, and then there was Gail, and then there was Junior, and then there were two more girls, and then the boys were all small. Well, Daddy felt sorry for Junior because he was stuck with the girls. <laughs> so he let him get away with everything. Uh. So he would be the one that always was doing the little um, devilish things mm -hmm. that we were saying. Mm -hmm. So I, there's like, I could write, a series on just Junior alone. So, so we just take, you know, yeah. So, so I, oh, that's what I'm going to be doing, just yeah. dealing with the uh, real life episodes. And then I was a teacher, so yeah, sure. lots of stuff that deal with that, and just real life with children, and how somehow the the morality without a hammer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. Real life the morality stories. without a hammer. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we've reached about the end of our time, but mm. I am so pleased that you came and spoke with me today. And, and we got to talk a bit about We Are Shining, mm -hmm. um, which uh, I believe is around 32 pages or so. I'm yeah, going to assume it's a picture page, book, so they tend to be about that. Right. Yeah, I loved pages. it. It was, yeah. I mean, I loved the poem, and it came to me. I could just lie there and read it. It, it was like a song. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wanted the little girl to dance all through oh. it, because it sounded like a song. Mm -hmm. And now it looks like a song to match. Mm -hmm. It's about $17.99. Um, we'd like to thank Harper uh, for allowing you to speak with us about the book today. Mm -hmm. And basically, um, I guess I should tell you guys about some of the upcoming shows that we got coming up here on Authors Voice Virtual Book Signing Network. Um, first of all, Lit with Love welcomes Meredith Duran to discuss her new book, and this is a great title, A Lady's Code of Misconduct. We're just going to take the entire shift here away from children's <laughs> books. Uh, learn how to ruin your reputation with handsome men who are very bad. Very bad is capitalized. Very and so is bad. In this perfect summer read, and that will be coming this Thursday, August 10th at 6 p.m. And next on A House Divided, author Walter Starr joins us to discuss his latest book, Stanton, Lincoln's War Secretary, which covers everything from Lincoln's trust for his Democratic opponent to the first ever impeachment of a president. That will be on Wednesday, August 23rd at 2 p.m. Uh, here on the Author's Voice Network. So mark your calendars for those. And thank you again for joining us here today. Thank you. I really right. enjoyed it. Cool.